Okay, how's it going everybody? I hope you're all doing well. And again, thanks for watching. Okay, so in this episode, I want to try to, to briefly say something about one of Plato's masterpieces called the Symposium. And more specifically, what I want to try to focus in on is what the, um, the great comic playwright Aristophanes is made to say there. Because what he says about love is absolutely incredible. Okay, so um, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so in Plato's Symposium, what Aristophanes does is he starts off by, by giving us a story. Not of love per se, but of our human beginnings. What he says is that in our earliest primordial time, we used to have um, double bodies where our backs were together and where our faces were, were turned away from one another. Conjoined like this, we were, we were one and basically circular in shape. And by the way, uh, it's interesting. According to Aristotle, the circle is the most perfect shape and symbolically a shape that has always represented ultimate wholeness. Anyway, okay, so Aristophanes' point here seems to be that in our earliest time, we were complete beings and so totally self-sufficient as well. That's to say, given this, this oneness, this completeness, there's absolutely nothing that we lacked or desired. Okay, but in this condition, Aristophanes goes on, because we were so, um, so unified and strong, we were also extremely confident and, and powerful as well. And so, because of this, we eventually uh, had a go at the gods. Now, it turns out that, uh, not surprisingly, that Zeus, being Zeus, wasn't going to tolerate any of this. And so, threatened and angry, what he did is he decided to, to weaken us by cutting every single member of the human race in half. And, well, the short of it is that this is the present condition we find ourselves in. That's to say, here we are, bisected and lost human beings who, who long for and are always trying desperately to find our other half. Okay, well, so what's Aristophanes trying to tell us about the nature of love then? Well, initially, you could say that, that love for him begins as something like, like the, um, the product of alienation. In other words, love and desire is born of the, the severance from the, from the unity that we used to be. And the, and the dislocation that we experience because of it. Or to put it another way, maybe, what love is born of is a deep wound. It's born of a feeling of incompleteness. We are all wounded and incomplete beings. Okay, but that's not the whole story about love. No. Hopefully, what love also culminates in is the, is the finding of our lost half. So, what love also is, then, is a reunion. It's a reintegration. It's a merging back into one. Ultimately, then, for, for Aristophanes, you might say that, that love is the cure for the wound we felt. It's a it's a retrieval of the wholeness that we lost and a, a return to our original nature. Actually, you know, this idea of love being the process of going backwards to our origins reminds me a little bit of uh, Sigmund Freud's view on love. Actually, more specifically, love for Freud is actually a kind of regression. It's a kind of movement back to our our early development when we were united with our parents. You see, for Freud, our parents are always implicated in love as sort of 
inconspicuous but uh, nevertheless guiding presences. In any case, um, according to Freud, this early stage was the time when the, um, the agony and the futility of separation had not yet been experienced. It was a time when we were made to feel totally comfortable and secure. A time when we were like the, um, the adored child again. You know, the, um, the absolute center of attention. So, for Freud, the upshot of it all is that the drive in love that we feel as adults is, well, it's essentially infantile in nature. In other words, it's wanting to go back in time when we were coddled and made to feel protected and in a condition of complete unity, as whole as a circle. Now, I don't mean to, to say that Aristophanes' view on love is, uh, is similar to Freud's in the details here. It's not. But the reason that Aristophanes reminded me of, of Freud is in the broad outline. That's to say, both Aristophanes and Freud seem to, to see love primarily in terms of a, a remembrance of things past and a um, rediscovery of lost joy. Anyway, so, so back to Aristophanes' view. So I want to stress a few more important points about it. So first of all, I think what's important to see is that for Aristophanes, the most real thing is a human couple, not an individual. And this is because, as mentioned, individuals on their own are severed and broken. And, and a variation on this point might be uh, something like this. Love for Aristophanes has nothing to do with um, atomized individuals seeking simple physical pleasure. No. What we seek when we love, for him, are relations. Relational subjects of healing and wholeness. Okay, well... We should also take notice of another important consequence of Aristophanes' view. It's this. It's that for each of us, there is exactly one other half. Our lost half. And this is what many of us mean when we, uh, when we talk about discovering our soulmate, right? That it just had to be this person and only this person. In any case, for Aristophanes, our love objects are not interchangeable. No, they're, they're absolutely unique and irreplaceable. Upon the death of our, our loved ones, then, there can be no replacement. It is interesting, though. Aristophanes does tell us that if we lose our other half, we'll still continue to, to have sex with other people but ultimately only because it temporarily conceals our fundamental condition of alienation. Actually, you know, I wonder if maybe this is why Odysseus in, um, in Homer's Odyssey sleeps with others during his, uh, his travels back from the Trojan War. Maybe, maybe he doesn't do it out of um, infidelity but because it helps him to momentarily mask the terrible pain of his separation, his, uh, his feeling of incompleteness without the one love of his life, his wife, Penelope. Anyway, I hope that all this helped to give some, some basic sense of the, of the incredible vision of love that Aristophanes is made to beautifully express in Plato's great dialogue on love, the Symposium. Bye for now.